Doug McCallum here. Today, I want to talk about how to get your canoe back. Now this is how to retrieve your canoe after you've managed to get it pinned on a log or a rock or under a log jam. And I think this is an important discussion because you're not faced with pinning situations every single day. It's a pretty rare event. And there's a couple of things that make canoe retrieval kind of tricky. One is that there's risk involved risk in practicing, and risk in the real situation. So you need to stay focused if you're going to do this safely. The other one is that every pin canoe situation is a little bit different. They're all kind of unique. So what I've done is developed a series of steps that can be applied to any pinning situation. And I've got a bunch of pictures together from canoe retrievals that I've been involved in that will help demonstrate how to complete each step, and give you ideas and options for the process. So when you're done here, I hope you'll have your own plan in mind that you'll be able to take away and apply to any pinning situation that you get faced with. So, let's head out on the river and see how this really works. So here we are out on the river, and as we all know, river canoeing is a lot of fun. Everybody's having a wonderful time, Everything's going great until it's not. And you find yourself in a situation like this. Now, you start thinking about pulley systems and retrieval procedures. And you're beginning to wonder, how am I going to get that canoe back? Well, let's see what we can do about that. First, a word about safety. Now, recovery is not a rescue situation. There are no people injured, there's no people at risk, and we want to keep it that way. So we want to go slowly and think about what we're doing. You don't want to make the situation any worse than it already is. But at the same time, you don't want to become complacent. You must always be alert and aware of the risks. You have to remember, always, always, always keep in mind, it's just a canoe. Here we go. We're going to look at the specific set of steps that are involved in recovering the canoe. Now, step one, again, you start out with the safety issue, and it's risk assessment. Can you manage the risks enough to safely carry out the recovery? Always remember, it's just a canoe. On to step two, and step two is canoe access. You must be able to physically get to the pinned canoe. This is necessary. If you're not going to be able to get to the canoe, it's already game over and this recovery isn't going to work. Now, canoes get stuck in all sorts of interesting places and getting to the pin canoe can be a very tricky business. When you're trying to get to a pin canoe, the safest way is to reach it from shore. Being on shore around rivers is usually always the safest place. In most cases, this is going to be your least risky choice. Now, a nice, big, solid log jam can be a reasonably safe place to work from as long as you're careful. This log jam is a different story. Far too much current, far too much instability. I had to walk away from this and come back in three months when the water was a meter lower and there was hardly any current. So you just have to be really careful about how you use log jams to get to the canoe. If you can't reach the pin canoe from shore, you may have to actually get into the water. And making your way on foot may be the next best choice for accessing the canoe. Making your way through a set of rapids on foot can be quite successful. You can do it quite well, especially if you use a paddle or upstream rope for support. Hopefully, you can get right to your pin canoe just by walking through the rapids. However, if you don't manage to get to the pin canoe from shore and you can't walk out to it, then you're probably going to have to get into your canoe. And getting there by canoe is usually your last and most risky option. There are simply more things that can go wrong once you're actually in the canoe. It's always important to keep a handle on how your risks are changing. If the situation gets much trickier than this, it might be time to reassess. So here we are. You've made it to the pin canoe. 
The question, of course, is what do you do next? And now we're at step number three. This is where you have to set up a rope from shore to the pin canoe. Now, if you're really lucky, it may just be a simple paddle. You can take the rope right out to the canoe with no problems at all. However, things are rarely that simple. Usually a throw bag is the next good choice for getting a rope out to the pin canoe. If you're gonna throw the throw bag from the middle of the river, this is another time to be very careful. Throwing a throw bag while standing on a slippery round boulder in the middle of Cedar Rapids can be a little dicey. You want to be assessing these risks all the time. Once you have some sort of rope in place between the canoe and shore, you can use it to set up your main hauling rope out to the pin canoe. Now, once you've got your main rope out to the canoe, you have to attach it to the canoe. And that can be a tricky proposition. Sometimes, just getting your hands to a place that you can actually tie on to can be pretty tricky. You usually end up tying the rope to whatever part of the canoe you can reach. Tying the rope to the canoe can be one of the trickiest parts of the entire operation. It can be awkward, it can increase your risks, and you have to be really careful when you're doing this. So you stay focused and you do the best that you can. And sometimes it takes a bit of ingenuity. Now this is me at that big log jam that I had retreated from three months ago. And I found this nice big pole in the log jam. So using duct tape, I taped my rope to the pole. I put a carabiner on the end. And then I was able to push the pole down almost three meters and use it to clip the carabiner to the end of the canoe. Now, if you're actually in a position where you happen to have a choice, there are some things to consider about how you tie onto the canoe. Things like decks, seats, thwarts, they may not be very strong points of attachment if you have to pull hard. However, if you're tied to one and then you wrap the rope around the hull, it can be a much more secure anchor point. Now in this picture, I'm trying to tie the rope to the seat, and then I'll take the rope, put it under the hull, and back out to the pulling point, which will give me a much more secure anchor on the canoe. So this diagram shows how that works. I tied the rope to the seat, and then I went back over and under the hull to pull. So the rope around the hull increases friction and reduces the actual pressure and force on the point that you tied it to. And as you pull, it also helps to lift the canoe off the obstacle. So this also works the other way. You can tie onto the thwart at the bottom and run the rope up over the hull. Then when you pull, it tends to roll the canoe away from the obstacle. Either one of these ways can work. It's just a matter of exactly how your canoe is pinned on the rock. All right, we've got the rope in place. And now it's time for step number four. And this is when we set up the actual pulling system to get the canoe free. People always ask me, what's the best angle of pull to choose when you're trying to set up your pulling system? And unfortunately, there's no best answer. You just have to go back and look at what you're trying to actually achieve. You need to pull upstream to take the pressure off the hull and therefore reduce the friction between the hull and the obstacle. At the same time, you want to pull sideways to get the canoe off the obstacle. So the angle you choose for your pulling rope is a balance between these two things. So you look at this, you try and figure out what your best angle is going to be, and then you look for a place to actually set up your anchor. And hopefully you will find a nice big solid anchor point right where you need it on the side of the river to anchor your pulling rope. However, it may be that you simply don't have an appropriate anchor point available, and it can take a little ingenuity to set something up. In this situation, I had to pull straight up out of this log jam, and that meant rigging up a little makeshift lifting bar so I'd have an attachment point to rig up my pulling system. And log jams can provide lots of raw material to do this sort of thing. However, Sometimes there is just no good anchor point available. But if you're lucky, you might be able to actually build one. Digging a simple T-slot is pretty easy 
and it can work quite well. And it works even in soft gravel like this. Once you've finished digging your little tea trench, you just get a short piece of log, wrap your anchor around it, put it in the trench, and you bury it. And once it's firmly buried, you've jumped up and down on it, it makes a very, very solid anchor. And the nice thing about building this kind of tea slot anchor is that you can build it wherever you want along the gravel bar. Now with your rope in place, it's time to set up the pulling system. This is our standard 3 to 1 Z-drag pulley system. The rope on the left goes to the canoe, the bite in the upper right goes to your big solid anchor on shore, and the rope on the lower right is the one that you actually pull on. And this is what the Z-drag looks like when it's all set up and ready to pull your canoe. Now, if you want to know more about how the Z-drag actually works and the mechanics behind it and pulley systems and mechanical advantage, you can look at my other two videos called Pulley Systems and Mechanical Advantage and the Z-Drag. And hopefully that will give you a really good idea how these things actually function. Here is the Z-Drag, all set up on the edge of the river, ready to go. Now in a situation like this, you've got lots of room for your traveling pulley to move. And this means you may be able to complete the pull, that is get the canoe right off, without having to reset your traveling pulley even once. On the other hand, you may find that, due to where you were forced to have your anchor point, you may have a very short pulling distance available to you. And this means that you may have to reset your traveling pulley a number of times before you're able to actually pull the canoe off. Now in this situation, I had the Z-drag connected right to the end of the canoe and I didn't have very much travel distance in that Z-drag system. And if you don't have much travel distance to start with, after you've pulled a little bit, you will run out of travel distance. So in a situation like this, what I had to do was stop pulling and then re-rig the Z-drag completely and attach it down to the mid thwart on the canoe. This increased my pulling distance again and was enough to allow me to actually recover the canoe. Sometimes your 3 to 1 Z-drag pulley system just isn't strong enough. Now if you have a good understanding of how your pulley systems work, you'll find it's quite easy to turn your 3 to 1 system into a very very powerful 6 to 1 pulling system when you need that extra strength. This brings me back to my last point about safety. These 3 to 1 systems or 6 to 1 systems are very powerful and they develop tremendous forces. And when you have a number of people pulling on that rope, you have to keep in mind that something is going to give. And it could be very, very abrupt. You need to understand where the weak points are in your system. It might be the secure point that you tied onto the canoe. It might be your prusik loops. It might even be your main anchor. But you need to be ready because when one of these things fails, when everybody's pulling hard, there is a very real possibility that somebody could get hurt. But if everything goes very well, you get to save the canoe. And hopefully nobody got injured in the process. And the canoe is in one piece. And you were able to do all this without losing any gear. This means that your canoe recovery was a success. And you get to be the hero of the day. So, that's my little video on canoe retrieval. And I hope it will give you some ideas or options, things that you can incorporate into your own plan, so that the next time you're faced with a canoe retrieval, you'll have a good chance of success. Now, if you like this video, Please click on the little subscribe button down below. That will help me out. And if you have any questions, please send me a little, a little comment and I'll do my best to answer them. So thanks very much for watching.